By the end of this video, you will be confident about creating layouts in Flutter. We are going to add a new page to the default project. We are going to create a new page that looks like a user profile. And then we are going to add a new button to the home page of the default project and clicking on that button, we shall load the new page. So we are going to dive a little deeper into creating layouts in Flutter and we are also going to learn how to load a new page from another. So you have to start here from this file main.dart of the leaf folder and then add a button to the list of children of this column. Now there are three different widgets for creating three different types of buttons in Flutter. One is text button which looks like this one. Simple text, no borders and nothing. Then we have outline buttons which is flat but it has an outline. And then we have the elevated button which looks like this one. So add an instance of this widget elevated button and to display a text inside this button you have to pass an instance of the text widget with the proper text to the property child of this button widget. We also have to implement the function on pressed, which will be called when the button is clicked. So here we are going to write the code to load the new page. Now create a new file inside this leaf folder. Let's name it widgets underscore demo. Follow this convention for naming files as suggested by the Dart style guide. You should name the files with lowercase letters and if the name contains multiple words, use an underscore to separate them. Now create a new stateless widget inside this file. There is a very handy shortcut for this in Android Studio. Type STLE double S and hit control and space together and select this option from the pop-up menu. Otherwise you can create a class using the class keyword then extend the stateless widget class and override the build function. The shortcut performs these three steps for us. Now we have some errors here as the ID does not yet know where to find these classes. And to fix this, you have to import the library containing the definition of these classes. And there is a shortcut for this too. Take your cursor to one of these missing classes and press Alt and Enter together. A pop-up appears with the defined options to import one of the different libraries containing a class with this name. And here, as we are creating a material design app, import material.dart. You can also import the file by adding the import statement manually. Now load this new screen on pressing the button on the My Home page. A screen or a page is called a root in Flutter and there is a widget named Navigator that manages the roots or the pages of a Flutter app. The Navigator keeps the pages on a stack and the page at the top of the stack is what we get to see. Run the default app and think about the navigator. Currently the navigator has only one root on its stack and that is visible to us. To load a new page, we shall ask the navigator to push a new root to the stack. It will place the new root at the top of the stack making it visible to us. If you press the back button or call the pop function of the navigator, the root at the top will be removed from the stack making the previous one visible. Now the question is how to use a navigator or how to create a navigator. You can create a navigator instance yourself but you don't need to. The material app widget creates one for us. To access the navigator you have to call navigator.off and pass an instance of build context. And an instance of the build context is always passed to the build function by the framework so you can use it. Pass this context to the function of and this context is used to locate a widget in a widget tree. Now call the function push to push a new root. You cannot pass the widget directly to this function. You have to pass a root and Flutter provides us a class 
for this called material page root. Using this class, we can specify which widget we want to be loaded as a page. So pass an instance of the class material page root to this function push. And then you have to provide a value for the property named builder of this material page root class. Now what value should you pass? You have to pass an implementation of a special function, also known as a builder function. This will be called by the framework and while calling it, it will pass a context. So you have to add a parameter to hold a build context. And you have to return the widget to be loaded as a root from this function. So return an instance of the widget that we have created recently, widget demo. Now save the changes and try clicking on this button. Notice that a new page got loaded. Currently this is black as we have not created the UI yet. Now let's create the UI. Return a scaffold from the build function of the widget, widget demo and add an app bar. Pass a text widget with the text to be displayed as the title to the property title of the app bar and pass container to the body of the scaffold. Save the changes and we have this page with an app bar and a body with white background. Now let us talk about this widget container. You will be using this a lot while creating Flutter apps. This is a convenience widget with many useful properties. For example, if you need to add a background color to a text, then you can wrap that text by a container and pass color to the property color of the container. Try changing the height, the width and the color of the container widget. Wrap it by a center widget to place it at the center. Save and notice the changes. Add a text widget as this child of the container to display the title of the user. We are going to display a profile image, the name of the user, the address of the user and the occupation. If you want to make this text a little bigger and bold, then you have to provide an instance of the class text style to the property style of the widget text. And while creating the instance, you have to pass a value for font size and also for the font weight. So let's pass 20 for the font size and font weight dot bold for font weight. So add a column to display multiple widgets vertically. Bring the cursor to the name of this text widget and hit Alt Enter together and select wrap by column. Show the address below the name of the user. Let's use two text widgets for two lines of the address. Now you will notice that the text came to the center and to bring them back to the left, we have to use the property cross axis alignment. Pass cross axis alignment dot start to the property cross axis alignment to align the widgets to the start of the horizontal axis. There is a similar property named main axis alignment to control the vertical alignment of the column. Pass main axis alignment dot center to the property main axis alignment and the widgets will be placed at the vertical center of the column. These properties exist for the widget row too, but the axis are reversed. In a row, the horizontal axis is the main axis and the vertical one is the cross axis. Now add a row to display multiple widgets horizontally. Show the occupation and the year of experience in a row. The widget row is similar to column but it is horizontal. You have to pass the list of widgets to be displayed horizontally to the property children. Add two text widgets here to the list. Now try providing different values for this property main axis alignment and see how does it look. I am going to keep this one main axis alignment dot space between to provide maximum possible space between these two texts. Now let's display an image. 
there is a widget named image to display an image. The widget image has different constructors for loading images from defined sources. Network, file, assets and memory. Use the constructor network to load an image from the internet. Pass the image URL, save the changes and the image appears. Add some padding to the container widget. Now here we have a benefit of using the container widget. The container widget has an inbuilt property for padding. Most of the widget does not have and in that case you have to use the widget called padding to enclose the widget around which you want to add padding. But container has the inbuilt widget padding and we can set a padding using this property. So we have to provide the value with help of the class aids in set. And this class has different constructors for providing padding in different ways. For example, you can use this constructor all to provide a padding for all the edges. You can use only to provide padding for only one particular edge. You can use LTRB to provide different values for the different edges. So explore these different options yourself and see how does it look. For now, let's use this constructor all and provide a value. Add some additional padding around the text below the image using the padding widget. Flutter provides a widget padding to add padding around any widget. The widget around which you want to add padding has to be added as the child of the padding widget. But we have four widgets to wrap. Thus, put these widgets inside a column first. Pass cross axis alignment dot start to the property cross axis alignment to bring this to the left. Now, wrap the column with padding. You can change the padding by changing the value passed to this constructor all of is in sets. Instead of all, you can call the constructor only to add padding to only one edge. You have to use this class edge in set to specify paddings and margins. Now add some space to the top of the occupation text. And there are different ways to do that. Let me show you a new widget, sized box. It creates a box of specified height and width. So add some height and see the changes. So we have learned how to display a button. We have learned how to load a new page or root or screen. We have learned about the container widget. We have learned how to display a text, how to display multiple widgets vertically, how to display widgets horizontally. And we have also learned how to display an image from different sources, from the internet. How to add padding to a widget. And overall, what is a widget? We have learned that everything is a widget in Flutter. We have realized that to create any component of the UI, we have to use a widget in Flutter.